So I just finished doing this example here. Haven't even moved the camera. Calculated the electric field that was associated with a change of potential. Uh, and I just made up some numbers. And I said, OK, we started out at, uh, let's see, yeah, yeah, started out at some location in space that had a uh, potential of three and a, uh, let's see, uh, yeah, started out at some location that had a potential of three and a half volts. And it was at a position that I called uh, two centimeters from presumably our origin or whatever, or two centimeters from our source charge or whatever. Anyway, uh, and then you moved two centimeters to end up at four centimeters away from your, from, uh, your origin, whatever. Sorry about that. And uh, at that new location, the potential turned out to be six volts. Okay. And uh, so then the change of potential was the final potential minus the in initial potential, the corresponding changes of position. And so then I calculated the electric field using this relationship up here. Okay. The electric field is equal to negative delta V over delta X. This relationship, remember, God, I keep hitting the microphone. I'm, I apologize for that noise. Uh, this relationship here, remember, is a consequence of the fact that the electric field vectors point in a direction perpendicular to the lines of equal potential. And then the negative sign means something that, I will, that I'm about to explain. But first, let me dispose of the issue with the units. I questioned at the end of the, of the previous recording, how did I get units of volts over meters for electric field? We know that the units of electric field are newtons per coulomb. What in the world is this? Did I do something wrong? The answer is no, I didn't do anything wrong. This is all correct. Mathematically, it's fine. The, um, the issue is simply a matter of interpretation. The electric field is what it is, but you can which but you can have different need. Uh, what, what I want to say, you have different needs, I guess, for the electric field depending on the question that you're trying to answer. In the early uh, days of this course, we were interested in the effect that an electric field would have on a test charge, specifically what force an electric field would create on a test charge placed in that field. As such, the natural units were newtons of force per coulomb of test charge. Now, however, we are thinking of the electric field as an indicator or as a measure of the rate at which the potential is changing as you change position in space. Remember that the electric potential, and for that matter the electric field also, are properties that are created by the source charge. And so uh, at this location in space, there's a certain electric field. And also at the same location in space, there's a certain value of electric potential. Over here, there's a different electric field and a different potential. Okay? And so there's a potential difference between this point in space and this point in space, just as there's a difference in the electric field between here and here. Okay. So as I move from here to here, the electric field changes, but so does the electric potential, and it seems reasonable that they should be connected. And they are. And this is the mathematical expression indicating that connection. Right? And so uh, I start here, and I move over to here. The potential changes, the electric field changes, but I'm also changing position. So the electric field is the rate at which the the number of volts changes as the number of meters change. And that's what these units then suggest. So whether you choose to use newtons per coulomb as your electric field units or whether you use volts per meter depends entirely on the physical situation that you're examining. Are you looking at forces or are you looking at, at changes of electric potential as you change position? Whichever one you're interested in, choose the units accordingly. It is possible to convert volts per meter to newtons per coulomb, and I will leave you uh, that as an exercise for you to do at home. Uh, but it's rarely useful to make that conversion. Uh, again, choose the units to match the physical problem that you're dealing with.
As for the negative sign, that's perhaps more interesting. It indicates, in fact, the direction of the electric field vector, which is, after all, what we just calculated. This, it looks like I just calculated the magnitude of my electric field vector, but the uh, direction is at least implied by this negative sign, and it goes like this. I'm going to imagine what this electric field might look like. I'm just going to make up a uh, electric field. I have no idea what it really is because I haven't. I don't even have a particular source charge distribution in mind. But it doesn't really matter. Let's suppose that my electric field looks something like this. More correctly, let's say this is my uh, family of equipotential lines, and so. 6 volts, 5 volts, 4 volts, 3 volts, OK? <clears throat> so every point on this curve is at 3 and a half, uh, sorry, 3 volts, 3 volts. Every point on this curve is at 4 volts, this curve 5, this one 6. In the statement of the problem, I started out at a point in space that had a potential of 3.5 volts, so apparently I'm halfway in between. So this is my starting point. This is what I called x1. And it has potential V1, which is, as I said, three and a half volts. And then I moved to a location in space that was two centimeters away from my starting point. And I ended up at a location in space where the potential was six volts. Now, I'm not trying to make this really two centimeters. I'm just trying to get a, a, you know, uh, an idea across. And so let's suppose that distance there is two centimeters. Okay. This position here is x2. And corresponding voltage 1 and voltage 2. OK. Now, the thing here is that the electric field I can sketch that in as well using the rule I told you in a previous lecture, which is uh, I'm going to draw the electric field so that the electric field vector is everywhere perpendicular to these equipotential lines. To do that, I need another piece of chalk, which is over there, so I'll be right back. So I will obey the rule, which is the electric field lines, the electric field vectors, sorry, need to be everywhere perpendicular to these equipotential lines. So that's going to look something like this. And I'm not trying over hard to space these uniformly. What I am trying to do, though, is be careful to get these field vectors everywhere perpendicular to the lines of equal potential. Okay, and maybe just a few more. These are all electric field vectors. They don't look like vectors yet because I haven't put the arrowheads on them yet. But the key idea, once again, is I'm trying to draw them so that they're perpendicular to the equipotential lines.
Okay. Yeah, all right, I'll throw in a couple more because why not? Good enough. All right, so those are the electric field vectors, except I still need to put the arrowheads on them. How do I decide that? That's what this minus sign over here means. This says that in going from x1 to x2, now you, we know that the potential decreased. We went from 6 volts down to 3 volts, as the problem said we did. So the potential decreased in going from here to here, right? Here's the secret. The electric field vectors will always point in a direction uh, of decreasing electric potential. They will always point from high potential to low potential. The potential is higher here, and it's lower here, and so these electric field vectors have to point this way. The reason for that is simply this. <clears throat> it will always be true that a positive test charge will spontaneously fall from high potential to low potential, okay? <clears throat> the initial potential was 3.5 volts. The final potential was 6 volts. Which means in going, in going from 3.5 volts to 6 volts, it gained 2.5 volts of potential, and therefore the test charge gained a, an amount of, a corresponding amount of potential energy. Exactly how much, we don't know, because we don't know how big the uh, test charge is, if there was one. So if a test charge moved from X1 to X2, it went from a low potential to a high potential, so it gained... Uh, potential energy, right? <clears throat> and what this minus sign is telling us is that we are going to def define the direction of the electric field so that it always points in the direction of decreasing potential energy of a test charge, or therefore equivalently decreasing electric potential of the source charge. So either decreasing electric potential energy of the test or decreasing electric potential of the source. But either way, our definition for the relationship between the electric field vectors and the change of potential of the source charge is that the electric field always points in the direction of decreasing potential. But in this particular example, our charge, our, either our test charge, if we had one, would increase electric potential energy, or we say, okay, forget the, forget the test charge, let's just think about the source. This point is at a lower potential than this point is, and so by definition, the electric field has to point in the other direction. The reason for this definition is simply this. Anytime some physical phenomenon happens, it will, if, it ha if that physical phenomenon, if that physical event happens spontaneously, that you don't have to force it to happen, then it will always be true that the system lost potential energy and therefore, in the case of electricity, would represent a decrease in electric potential. Anything that happens spontaneously must correspond to a decrease of potential energy. Since this thing would represent an increase of potential energy, it cannot happen spontaneously. So we choose to define our electric field so that it points in a direction of decreasing electric potential. 
and therefore decreasing electric potential energy of a, of a test charge. It doesn't have. It didn't have to be that way, but that was. But you had to choose something. Either electric field points in, in. Either we could have chosen to have the electric field point in the direction of increasing potential, or point in the direction of decreasing potential. You got to choose one. We chose to have it point in the direction of decreasing potential. <clears throat> and the reason for that is not all that complicated. It's simply because remember the direction of the electric field uh, was. Back in the day, we defined it in terms of a positive test charge. We're doing the same thing here, still defining the direction of the electric field in terms of a positive test charge. But in this case, the, not the force on a positive test charge, but rather the change of potential energy of a positive test charge. Okay? And if you put a positive test charge in this field that I've drawn here, it would spontaneously move from here down to here. Since that's not what happened, since I told you that the, the positive charge actually moved from here up to here, that can't happen spontaneously, so we must have, it must have gained potential energy in doing this. So that wouldn't happen spontaneously. We had to force it to happen. That would give it potential energy. That means this is lower potential. This is higher potential. We're fighting the electric field rather than having the electric field do, it, uh, do the work for us. So that's what that is. So the minus sign, in short, means that the electric field vector points in the direction of decreasing electric potential. That's what the minus sign means. So when you draw your electric field vectors across your uh, and perpendicular to your equipotentials, when the time comes to decide the direction that you should put your little arrowheads, always point the arrowheads of the electric field lines so that they are pointing toward from high potential down to low potential. That's the rule. Okay? So that's that. Uh, next thing I want to do in the next recording is try to make the connection uh, or revisit, I guess I should say, the connection between electric potential of the source charge and electric potential energy of the test charge uh, and clear up a few items of possible confusion. And so that'll be next. <laughs>